this is what the NTSB is saying. This is kind of a, a functional diagram. It's not meant to be absolutely precisely correct in the details. This is just a kind of a logical schematic diagram of what the NTSB is saying. So basically, here's the 800-pound Tennessee lateral. I'm guessing it's 800-pound. It could be up to 1,000 or so. Um, comes into the Methuen City Gate, which is an MNR station, metering and regulating. It heats the gas, it odorizes it, it measures it, decompresses it, and it also cleans it and then puts it on the 75 pound main. The 75 pound main runs throughout the affected area and it's connected by a variety of these regulators to, now this is, the, what I'm describing to you is how the NTSB views this system, okay? And I don't think this is right, but the NTSB says all of these regulators connect up to basically a single low pressure network that goes out to 8,570 homes and businesses. I think that there's at least three major geographic areas that are not interconnected. And just to keep it simple, this diagram shows three. Here's one, here's one, here's one. And we could say that this one is Andover. This one's South Lawrence. This one is North Andover. A regulator failed in South Lawrence. This is according to the NTSB theory. So it overpressurized this low pressure segment, but it should have stayed confined to South Lawrence. If this is really how the affected area looks, then that means we have to we have to solve a new problem. How did the high pressure gas escape from this segment and jump to other segments which are not connected? <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous! <laughs> of all the stupid suggestions. <laughs> Something else is clearly going on now. What I think happened is that. And this solves the problem, but it creates a new one. I believe that these segments are separate, and that means multiple regulators. Now, out of these 14, we know there's 14 regulators that feed this low pressure system. Out of these 14 regulators, if we have three segments, then we had to have at least one, two, three regulators that failed at the same time to overpressurize each unique low pressure segment within the affected area. Do you see what we're saying here? This is what we call a common mode failure. We're looking for what was a single root cause that, have ca that could have provoked at least three and likely more of these regulators to all fail at exactly the same time. Isn't that weird? That's really weird. Now we have an explanation for that here, but I'm just laying out the problem so you can see the problem with the NTSB's theory. Now let's go to the map and look at this in detail. So let's turn off the, let's turn off the strange shape. I call that a seahorse, but it could be a roar shark test. I don't know, but it's a strange shape. Let's turn it off and let's look at what we have. So, Let's start filling in some of the gaps. So this is what we know to be true. We know this for a fact that we have this facility here called the Methuen City Gate. And what does it do? Well, the Methuen City Gate forms the, uh, the boundary between this high pressure transmission line system, which is this is the Tennessee pipeline, which stretches from Texas all the way up to Massachusetts and there's a lateral that comes off like this like we said the pressure of this is likely between 800 and a thousand psi and from there 75 pound gas goes off in all directions so 
but we're gonna we're just gonna concentrate on this section here that leads down to the affected what we call the affected area okay so you understand what this kind of looks like so far once again this is 75 pounds per square inch of pressure okay so once it crosses the river it fans out and it fans out some more so we don't know the exact location of these pipes uh, we've been trying to get this information but it's being withheld from the public so we've made some guesses just to get an idea of what this kind of looks like okay don't assume where you see the blue lines that uh, this is actually where the distribution mains really exist this is hypothetical once again we just want to get an idea a rough idea of what this uh, area looks like now then Columbia Gas was doing work the day of the accident in this region right here. So this was the regulator they say failed and this was the end of a section of it looks like the distribution main. I'm going to guess that it's the distribution main that they capped off and they were replacing it with plastic pipe. And they left it in the ground and they left the pressure sensor attached so that when the abandoned pipe eventually dropped down to zero pressure. The sensor on this pipe that was abandoned kept on telling this regulator to open up and give more gas because it tries to maintain a constant pressure. This is what NTSB says happened. So now let's turn on what NTSB says. This is the affected area. Because this regulator failed, it charged every one of the, you know, this whole system down here, the low pressure side. The low pressure pipes are not shown on this diagram, by the way. They branch off. Now, let's show the regulators. So, here are the regulators. Here's 14 regulators. We know there's 14 regulators. So, I kind of just put them kind of scattered throughout this area. So, this one failed and it charged this whole system. That's what NTSB says. So what I say is that it seems to me like it's very likely that there are at least three distinct areas here. We have the North Andover area, we have South Lawrence, and we have Andover here. And because of the highway and the river, I believe it's very unlikely that these individual low pressure systems are connected directly. They might, they're connected through the 75 pound main. So the question is, if this was where the failure was, why were the gas fires not confined to this low pressure segment? Does that make sense? In fact, it spread to at least two others, which is unexpected according to the NTSB theory. It doesn't make sense according to the NTSB theory. So what, here's what I recently found out, okay? What I recently found was, I recently found a document called um, the Columbia Gas of Mass Restoration Plan. And it showed eight different gas zones. And here they are, here are the eight zones. And Here's Andover. So this is a low pressure system of low pressure pipes that go out to all these different individual homes out here. And they are fed by a regulator, uh, which is attached to the, uh, the distribution main. I didn't draw that correctly. I'm just fixing it. So this regulator converts the 75 pound gas into 0 0.5 pound gas and distributes it locally. So this is zone one. Here's zone two. And notice there are some unique regulators, one or more, that service zone two. By the way, look what's in zone two. Zone two is where Express Natural Gas is located. This is Express Natural Gas's uh, home base. They're in zone two. They're taking these high pressure tube trailers and they're connecting them to natural gas local distribution systems. Man battle stations. Man battle stations. Zone one, zone two, we're just gonna turn them all, all on. Zone three, 
with its own unique regulator. Zone 4 with one or more regulators. We have 14 regulators total. Here's zone 5. Here's zone 6. Here's zone 7. And here is zone 8. Okay. So... And now here's what's interesting. I always wondered where the NTSB or WCVB is where I actually first saw this, the crazy seahorse shape. And apparently that actually came from Columbia Gas. Um, we have evidence of that now. But here's the, the seahorse shape. And let's put an outline around it. Notice the seahorse shape is perfectly coincident with the eight zones. So now we know why this is shaped the way this is. This is how Columbia Gas views this network. These are eight zones, and I believe these eight zones are each low pressure seg segments, low, low pressure systems that are all separate from each other, that are all not connected. So now we've even got a bigger problem. Do you see what that is? So the bigger problem is, if the problem happened up here in zone five, right? This was where the work was being done between here and here. Why were the fires not confined to zone five? How did the fires jump to seven other zones? It doesn't make any sense. So this is the major problem.